Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenbord, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Monday, October 10th, 5.11 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. State of the market, we are in a correction. You can see in the trend gauge over here, all five of the major indexes that we track are trending below their short-term 21-day exponential moving average, below their medium-term 50-day moving average, and below their long-term 200-day moving average. We do still have a 21 over 21 leaders list, but really all they're doing is stocks that are for the most part going sideways and not going down. Still, that's, that's an all right thing. That means they're showing relative strength, and it means that these are the stocks that we want to keep track of when the market writes itself as more often than not, these are the stocks that are candidates to lead the next uptrend. So what happened today? Continued weakness, NASDAQ 100 and the NASDAQ composite made new correction lows. You can see the red numbers here. Surprisingly, as red as they are, we did finish off the lows. G6, this is our six ETF growth composite down 1.4%, S&P 500 down 0.75, NASDAQ 100 down a percent, Dow down 0.3, mid caps down 0.2, Russell 2000 small caps down 0.6, global diversified 60-40 stock and bond down 0.64. Protection, we are all in cash, so we were flat. We went to uh, all cash Friday, um, and that was with the negative reaction to the jobs report. The market had been trying to make a rally attempt, failed miserably, and we either got stopped or actively sold out of our positions. So let's uh, let's move ahead into some charts and first let me explain how and why we do what we do here at Revere. At Revere, risk management is our first job. Downside protection, you handle your drawdowns. And what is a drawdown? Drawdown is the simply, it's just the percent that you lose off of your account's high water mark. Your high water mark being the most, your, the most amount you, uh, you've ever had in your account. You control the drawdowns. And the gains take care of themselves because we will participate in market uptrends because our rules will get us back in just like our rules got us out. So let's talk about those rules a little bit. Go back to October, November of last year, the market was trending above all of the key moving averages. The green line is the short term 21. The red line is the medium term 50. The black line is the long term 200. When we're trending above that, we will be as long in the market as we comfortably can be. And then we'll see how far that ride, we're, what we're looking to do is ride a wave. We don't know how long the wave is gonna go. You never know, and that goes for the upside, the downside, and consolidations. Also, there's, the market can only do three things can only go up in a trend, down in a trend, or consolidate preparing for that next higher or lower trend. And if that trend starts to turn south in a big manner, uh, we will get stopped out of our positions and the markets and the moving averages, and particularly the green line, that's the short term, the red line, the medium term, if they start to roll over now, the market really has our attention as far as being defensive. And if we break the black line, we absolutely have our antenna up and are mostly in cash or hedged. And the reason for that is my favorite chart, the chart I keep under my pillow at night, the one that I look at five times a day, the one that reminds me how devastating bear markets can be. This is the last 13 bear markets going back to 1968. The highlighted six bear markets lost on average 44.5%. That takes 80% to get back to even. If you've ever had a friend or a relative have their portfolio devastated, in a couple of years before they approach retirement, you know how sad a thing this can be. We firmly believe, and our numbers have proven it, that with a sell discipline that particularly pays attention to when you break below the 200-day moving average, all of these bear markets have taken place below the 200-day moving average. If you get on defense when you're under the 200-day moving average, you can save yourself a lot of physical, mental, emotional capital, and you're ready for the next time the market wants to rally. So after we get out of the way, we've got rules for getting us back in relative to 
uh, false breakdowns or moves back above short-term moving averages. Uh, and then we just add to our positions if it continues to work. A good example of this was off of the June lows, we had uh, over a 10% gain, but it stopped when we ran into this declining 200-day moving averages. Uh, everybody just decided that that was uh, as much profit as we were gonna squeeze out of it. We started selling and a bunch of bad economic news and uh, and commentary from the Fed started coming our way particularly on 826, this is Jerome Powell saying, hey, pay attention. I don't know what you guys are doing with your market rally here, but we're not gonna stop raising rates anytime soon. Then we had a bad CPI number, uh, then we had a bad employment number, and you just pay attention to what's going on and realize where you are, and that's under the 200-day moving average, and when you're under there, uh, be more aggressive to be defensive. Does that make sense? Aggressively defensive, because that's what we do when we're under the 200-day moving average. This is how we protect capital. And if you're interested in an approach like this, give us a shout. You can email me. That's don at revereasset.com. You can email Danny Stewart, Revere President. He'd be glad to talk to you about becoming a client. That's dan at revereasset.com. Or you can call 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. In a nutshell, that is our strategy. We've got a bunch of tactics along the way, deciding what we're buying, when we're buying it, how much of it we're buying, how long we're holding it. Uh, but the proof is uh, the proof is in the numbers, so give us a shout if you're interested in it. So there's your S&P 500, and what you can see here is we had these two nice up days uh, last week on Monday and Tuesday, paused for a little bit, Wednesday and Thursday, and then the big gap down and close near the lows on Friday on, ironically, an inflation report that was considered, not inflation, a, a jobs report that was considered to be too good to indicate that the Fed might stop raising. The market is looking for any reason, any dovish reason to rally. Uh, and what we're looking for is economic data. Maybe we get that with CPI on Wednesday. We'll keep an eye out for it. But for now, uh, further deterioration to the downside today didn't quite undercut the lows of 930 on the S&P 500, but we did on both the NASDAQ composite and on the NASDAQ 100. As you can see here, continued relative weakness. That means this blue line along my cursor is trending lower. Uh, tech stocks lead higher and they lead lower, and they're certainly leading this leg lower. Uh, you can see new closing lows and new uh, correction lows were made today on that. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Didn't undercut from last week, but still lower by three-tenths of a percent today. How about mid-caps? They had been doing some leading and uh, the they haven't uh, still at uh, 412, so about 3% above uh, this 400 area that marked a support area. Uh, over the past two weeks. You can see we had several closes above the 21 here, so definite relative strength in mid caps. That's about the only good sign uh, I can see lately for the market. Uh, that and the fact that um, we, we still do have 21 uh, somewhat leading stocks uh, above their 21 day exponential moving average. Let's go to small caps now. Uh, haven't undercut either. Uh, one close above the 21 last week and then faded with a bad uh, Friday and uh, down another half percent today. So those are the leading indexes. Let's let's look at uh, the G6. These are the six growth proxies that we track, and they got above their 21-day moving average, kind of in sync with mid caps last week. Not all of them did, uh, but again, there was relative strength here. Note this relative strength line where my cursor is over the last two weeks. Uh, small and mid growth stocks have been showing uh, some some pretty good signs, at least relative to their value counterparts. And this is one of the things that we're gonna be looking for uh, we, should the market attempt to put in a bottom is some leadership in uh, small and mid cap growth because that's really the pond uh, that we fish in. That's IWO, let's take a look at FFTY. This is the Investor's Business Daily 50 index. That got up to the 21 and failed. Uh, still showed a little bit of relative strength, but not as much. PDP is a momentum ETF, also showed relative strength, also had three closes above the 21. QQQJ is a mid-cap NASDAQ 100, one close above and then faded, not quite as 
uh, as impressive. And again, this is going to be tech focused and tech, the QQQ is leading lower. So it makes sense that the QQQJ would lag also. Next up is Art K, Kathy Wood, uh, taking a beating, not quite at the lows that we were at all the way back in May for her. Uh, but still certainly not good. In fact, she wrote a letter to the Fed today asking for them to stop cutting interest rates. Yeah, I bet she would like the Fed to stop cutting interest rates. Uh, MDYG, the flaw with uh, with her ETFs is that she's got to be invested no matter what state the market's in. And when uh, her type of stocks are out of favor, she's got nowhere to go. Uh, three Here's uh, the mid-cap growth, three closes above the 21, but gave it up toward the end of last week. So a mixed bag there. But uh, I do want to notice that something when we had uh, the stochastic turn higher from oversold, sometimes it you know goes straight up to overbought. Sometimes it takes a detour along the way. But for now, they've all hooked lower, uh, and that's just another sign in case we couldn't tell by the declining balance in the account uh, that it's time to get the heck out of the way. So. Uh, all of those stochastics from the S&P 500, all five of the major indexes and the six growth ETFs have taken a hook lower, and that's certainly not what we're looking for. Uh, let's go to the tail of the tape and uh, see what's new here. Uh, technical indicators, the indexes and the G6, that hookup failed, as I pretty much just mentioned. Put call at 1.05, VIX above 32, fear and greed at 20. We're still operating under the bear case with that uh, two-day attempted rally last week in the big cap stocks failing. Jamie Dimon could go down another 20%. This is reiterated by Paul Tudor Jones that they think we're looking at a serious recession. So uh, that helped move the market uh, lower this morning, those comments. Then two Fed speakers, Evans and Brainerd, came out a little bit more dovish than they had recently been. And the market rallied for a bit on that, but gave up most of it. So two days down we have now off of that consolidation. The bond market was closed today, but that didn't keep bonds from trading, the futures from trading. And uh, they were higher across the board. And that means. Sorry, they were lower across the board. That means rates are going higher. I mentioned CPI Wednesday morning. Expectations negative after Friday's gap down. Q making new correction lows and all the indexes being down confirmed that negative expectation. We did undercut support on both the S&P and the NASDAQ 100. Uh, the dollar was up today, uh, half percent, pretty strong. DBA, that is a commodity food ETF Strong basic materials, industrials, staples, and utilities, so some defensive uh, strong today. Bonds down, gold, silver, and gold and silver stocks down. Oils down, biotech, banks, technology, semiconductors, and software all lower today. Our focus not on individual names because of the state of the market, but we are looking to isolate intraday relative strength. Uh, and being led by the names that are in the 21 over 21 and also monitoring the indexes for where they are in this recent consolidation range. Uh, the portfolio, all cash coming into today, all cash going out, no trades at all. Bottom line, continued weak, weakness, NASDAQ and the NASDAQ comp uh, make new lows. Uh, we did break one level of support today. That's that 36.36, 36.47. The lows from June and September closed back below there. Uh, we are sitting in this big range of 35.75 to 36.14, which is a 25% year-to-date drop, the 200-week moving average, uh, and closing off of uh, the highs uh, and the low. Uh, year to date, sorry, the, the, the high and the close, um, not to mention, then you've got the year to date, 25%. Market topped right at the beginning of the year. That's why those three are, uh, are clustered right together. Uh, next level down is this 3550 to 3588. This was the November 2020 breakout going all the way back. Two full years were above that. We tested it today. In fact, the low was 3588. 3584 is the low from 930. Uh, so that's in that range also. Uh, so now really all we're doing is uh, seeing how low we can go before we stop going lower, try to put in a bottom similar to what we 
did a couple of weeks ago where you just stop going lower. The lower bound uh, serves as support and maybe you get some good news and try to get some individual stocks rallying. That good news could be uh, Russia, Ukraine. It could be actually that's another thing that popped the markets today is around the same time that those Fed uh, speakers were making some dovish comments. The Kremlin said, hey, we're open to diplomacy. Sure, they are. They lob a bunch of missiles and then say they're open to diplomacy. So uh, it's funny how the headlines uh, can rally the market as the algorithms respond to whatever they see and all that ended up happening. Let's take a look at a five minute chart of the S&P intraday. This was the little uh, area where we rallied. We had three legs down. This really was ugly. This is just uh, pure selling from this 3624 all the way down to 3588. Then the headline started hitting all in the span of about 45 minutes. We rallied up to 3634 and then just went sideways into the close. Uh, so we'll see what tomorrow brings. As far as individual stocks, let's see what the best and the worst of the 21 over 21 list were. We'll start with the worst. Las Vegas Sands down 7.6% today. Let's go to the daily chart. Uh, anything that tries to break out isn't going to make much progress in a bear market. That's just how bear markets work. Broke out last week, three days higher, gave it all back in two days. AEHR, this was uh, had the big up day. Uh, this is Silicon Carbide test systems up 24% on 500% above average volume on Friday. Gave up nearly most of it, was down 10% intraday, but uh, buyers came in. So uh, that's a good sign, closed in the upper part of the range, even though it was down 3.5%. Uh, bounced at the 50-day moving average, put a plus mark or put a check mark in the positive column for AEHR, uh, one of the leaders, although it is uh, on the FID side. LNG down 3.4% today as all oils pretty much corrected, SRPT breaking the 50-day moving average. Let's take a look at, those are the top four down. Let's take a look at what the top four up were. Steel Dynamics, uh, hitting its head on the 50-day moving average, but it's above the 21-day. CF continues uh, to be a leader in showing relative strength, up 1.65% on the day. On the day. WWE, three-day pullback off of trying to break out, bounced off the 8 EMA, great relative strength, which is a hallmark of pretty much everything that you're seeing on this list. Uh, the stock that continues to Act the best, in my opinion, is Harmonic HLIT, but it, again, it's thin. And Northrop Grumman today, I don't know if they know there's a fight coming or what, but it's been up two days on above average volume, showing relative strength and price uh, action. That's going to wrap it. As always, love to hear from you. The email is Donna or VRSet.com. The phone is 855 Real Wealth. So remember, folks, it's not how much you make in the market. It's how much of that you can keep. That's why we're so focused on protecting the downside. The upside will take care of itself if you control your drawdowns. And uh, that's the bottom line. So wrapping up Monday, October 10th, this is Don Vandenborg telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great day.